Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reitete, Consultant Audiologist and Director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in what is uh, another demonstration video of our recently developed Waxscape. Now the Waxscape isn't yet commercially available, but it will be, uh, we're anticipating early autumn, so uh, in the next few months. If you are interested in the Waxscape, please do register your interest by emailing info at clearwax.co.uk and we shall add you to our mailing list. So I've got, uh, I had a husband and wife duo, a patient that I attended today, and um, I'll let yourselves guess um, who's, if it's patient one is the wife or the husband. Uh, I suspect after seeing patient two, it'll, it'll make that decision a bit easier if you stay tuned. And you can see this is patient's one's left ear. We managed to remove that waxwork really straightforward. And you've got a lovely view of the eardrum there. It's nice and focused. You can even see the cord of tympani. And we're just going to move on to their right ear. So in this procedure, I'm using the uh, 4.25 millimeter speculi. I suspect this is going to be the most commonly used speculi, but we have got a smaller one. Uh, a 3.5 mil and uh, a couple of large ones, a 5 mil and a 5.75. So we're just using um, the speculum to expand the ear canal. Um, primarily, these videos are designed for healthcare professionals, um, but of course, if you're a Facebook follower, a YouTube follower, you're more than welcome to enjoy uh, and watch these videos. I know some um, prefer the endoscopic view, so I'm, all, I'm always uploading videos with the endoscope, the iClearscope as well. Um, as well, but obviously, um, someone who's developed the uh, the waxscape, we want to promote the product, um, uh, educate uh, my fellow colleagues on its use and its advantages. So I'm going to be trying to. It is difficult, but I'm at present I'm uploading almost two videos a day: one with the waxscape, one with the eye clearscape. So this is the patient one's right ear. Similarly, you got a lovely view of the eardrum. You can just see uh, how clear and focused the view of the eardrum is. So this is patient two, and uh, I believe this is we're starting off with the left ear, if I'm correct. So just stretching the ear wide open. I'm using the 4.25 millimeter speculum again. I just reduced the exposure just slightly to begin with, uh, because, because the wax is near the entrance, this piece of wax, because it was getting a slight reflection, but in a moment I do increase the exposure again. And all this can be done live um, whilst the wax scope is in situ. Uh, you can adjust the focus and the brightness. And it's really straightforward to do. Um, there is a zoom function. Um, that we're, trying to, we're going to try and simplify the zoom function. Um, but you can see that it's a great magnification here. And this patient too has got very sticky wax and very matted. Um, wax. And there's also a lot of dead ker keratin. We know that by the consistency and the the appearance, the shine this wax has. It's really glossy. When it's glossy, that's actually dead skin. Dead skin goes through a phase of almost becoming like caramel in consistency. And it also gives up a glossy appearance. And that's what this patient has in this the left ear. Just use some drops just to lubricate the ear and help loosen um, the wax and keratin off the canal wall. Now they have got a narrow ear. They've had this wax impaction since January, if I'm correct. Um, they were, um, they, they, were, they went, attended, I think they saw uh, an ENT registrar examined. Their primary purpose was um, to have their uh, a nasal examination. Um, they had they got nasal polyps and they were advised that they had some wax at the time, but it wasn't suffice enough to have it removed. So what I'm doing now, this is what's great about the wax scope. Um, we're able to use a full range of ENT instruments, and you'll see that in this procedure. So there was a gap at the top, and because of the consistency, I just used the Jobson horn to remove some of the more lateral wax. And I'm going to go back in with the Jobson horn. You can see how easy it is to glide it in. We can get in and behind the wax. And slowly but surely bringing this wax forwards and out of the ear. And you can see there's loads of hairs that are matted. And that might have given it away now. Um, so patient two, if you hadn't guessed already, is the husband. And patient one um, is the patient's wife. And the reason why I said it will become more apparent in patient two, if you weren't sure of whether 
um, the first it was female or male is typically not always the case but typically um uh, in my experience anyway and it might just be anecdotal but men typically have more hairs not only at the entrance of the ear canal but also on the tragus so the tragus is the piece of the triangular piece of cartilage just on the outside part of your ear and uh, a lot of men um, trim that and what can sometimes happen and that's what's happened with this patient as they're trimming their tragal hairs these hairs are flying loose into the ear and they're, they're matting against the wax which makes it a lot more difficult to remove so um, it forms a matrix almost and the wax gets tangled up in, in, in between and um, so just advise the patient to um, just position some cotton wool not not to push it in the ear but just seal the entrance whilst they trim their ear hairs and that, that should help Slowly but surely, we're just separating this wax from the canal wall. I actually use, um, at the clinic we've got an ENT microscope and I used that the other day as well. And in terms of magnification and the clarity of view, I think the wax scope, um, at least in terms of my ENT microscope, really stood up firmly against it. It was quite amazing actually. So um, the more and more we're using the wax scope, the more... Um, with the benefits I'm realising and in fact today um, I had a full clinic all with wax removals and um, I managed to um, use the wax scope with all the patients today uh, uh, it can be easy and it, for me to revert to the end scope because I'm so used to it but I really I'm starting to really enjoy using the wax scope now as it has got different benefits it's got different um, in terms of the magnification at least and um, I mean, I've got used to, st to stretching the ear canal open with the endoscope, but of course with the speculum it does make it a bit easier. So you can see all those hairs that are matted against the wax. And uh, the, so you're using some forceps now just to um, open the jaws and trying to get the jaws over some of these hairs. I'm just pulling those out. We've got a still image at the end and you'll see some of the debris and all these hairs. So do stay tuned again. That's what's, this is what's great with the wax scope. We were able to use, as I mentioned before, all the anti micro instruments during the procedure. Yeah, we've got some more hairs out. In fact, the more I'm thinking of it, um, the last week or so, I've had loads of patients with loads of hairs in their ears and matted ear wax. I've uploaded quite a few of those. Again, just using the speculum, just to stretch the ear open and straighten it. Uh, I've removed some of the hair, so I'm just going back in with a suction probe now. There's a big bundle of hairs there that I'm removing. And I think now i managed to remove the plug in one piece. We're just using these little circular wriggle motions to bring the wax slowly out. So that's the tip, kind of the head of the wax, sorry. And it's that probably now out of the ear. And I'm just, you can see the wax that's a bit further away. It's a bit darker, so that's oxidized. I managed to extract that from the ear canal. It's so back into the ear. I'm going to straighten the ear canal. I'm going to adjust the focus, and you'll see a lovely clear view of the ear. Patient's eardrum, again, you can see all the capillaries, the blood vessels. I'm going to just have a look at the attic now in a moment. So we're going to go up, just to make sure there's no retraction. Stunning view of the eardrum. And you can, the patient did have quite a bendy and narrow ear canal, so... And that's where I think the wax scope will help um, delegates who struggle with the eye clear scope. Um, the dexterity needed, um, the bilateral integration. So this is the patient's right ear, and similarly, um, it's quite a few hairs that are matted. Loads of keratin involved with this wax plug. It's quite glossy. I think I'm going to use an ear hook now. You can just see how easy it is to insert the ear hook. Um, just glide it at the top. I'm now going to the front part of the ear canal. I'm just trying to detach it, pull the wax skin lesions away and okay, I managed to remove some matted earwax there I've put some olive oil spray in just to help as I said um, bind the wax together and lubricate the canal wall and also the inside of the suction probe 
And just look at that clarity with the suction probe, and that's what's great about the waxscape. Um, you're seeing the instrument, and that's key. Well, if you're removing earwax, you want to be able to see not only the wax, but the instrument crystal clear so you know where you are in the ear, you don't want any distortion, you don't want to bumping into the ear canal and making it uncomfortable for the patient. So I'm just going from the bottom and I'm going upwards here. So I'm just trying to lift it off the canal wall because it is stuck to the bottom. So I'm just more at the roof of the ear canal. I'm just trying to bring this wax plug downwards. You can see the motions there. I'm just getting a suction grip and bringing it down. Almost tucking it under the top part of the cartilage. So the cartilage at the top is almost enveloped itself around the plug of wax. So I'm just trying to bring this under the cartilage so I can release it and then bring it forwards. So it's slowly coming away now. And I'm just trying to curl it around the first and second bend of the ear canal. And again, I'm just using these um, wriggle motions just to extract this wax out of the ear canal, make sure it comes out in one piece, hopefully. So the head of the wax is now extended beyond the entrance. And there we are. So almost there you can see there's quite a few hairs there the patient's ear canal in both sides the entrance at least was quite um, narrow and that's why it's a bit of a, a tussle now because the wax is halfway out we just got to bring it on all the way and this is it's quite a large plug and you'll see that on the still image I show at the end of the video so we're going to go back in and you're going to see a stunning view of the eardrum now. We're going to get the, the eardrum even more in focus. There we are. Even for me, after performing the procedure, it's quite breathtaking just to watch it back and see the clarity provided by the waxscape. And that's the earwax and keratin plugs and all the hairs that I extracted from patient two. And... Um, as mentioned before, if you are interested in the waxscape, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you.